a sort of faulty machines. I claim, I repeat, over 70 percent of the crashes are due to man-made errors. But despite the odds, I still believe they are safe. I mean, their transportation is still very safe, if all hands are on deck. Okay. Uh, because many times uh, people have come out to say, we are line operators, especially the domestic ones in Nigeria, don't pay attention to so many things. You get, uh, like, you recruit unqualified staff, uh, your aircrafts are not good, so many other things. Uh, that is true. To some extent, but uh, I believe uh, for the past five years now, though it is painful, the tragedy that just occurred, there is uh, a standard of measuring how safety and uh, in the aviation industry is in each of the countries worldwide. By a cow rating, I mean the International Civil Aviation Organization. Nigeria for the past five years has attained ca category A. You can never influence such rating. But until recently, with this uh, incident now, definitely our rating will drop. Okay. I'll come back to you, Alaji. Um, let's go to Mr. Adams now. Considering all the crashes reported in the country so far, do you think an average Nigerian will want to embark on any air travel for now? Thank you. Uh, viewers, good evening once again. I mean, the incident, uh, to my mind, is just like um, uh, land transportation, in particular uh, motor vehicle. I mean, the fact that accidents are happening cannot stop you from, I mean, uh, think, I mean uh, continuing to travel by road. The same thing I see in... Uh, in um, uh, air travel because there are journeys that uh, you cannot even go by road. What are you supposed to do? If you have a business to do in South Africa, won't you go? If you have a business, you want to go? And uh, even um, so far, so good. I think air has been something that um, um, is uh, very safe. And uh, just like the last speaker said, if uh, uh, that. Uh, most accidents, 70% uh, of them, of course, are ready to, uh, are man-made. Then those man-made issues can be sorted out and giving more credibility to, to uh, air travel. I think it's not, it's not a thing that can demoralize anyone. That is not to say that there are, no, there are, there are nothing to be done to, to improve you know, safety in the air. So much to be done, either from the human error, from the uh, logistics side, and so on and so forth. I think that will not stop us from traveling. We will continue to travel. And, uh, the only thing is that uh, there are many things to be done by all those concerned and to ensure higher safety. I'm sure we'll get to that. Okay, then. Uh, Prince Roju, despite all these crashes we're talking about, it is still widely believed, just like uh, the airline operator has just said, that. Air travel is still one of the safest ways of traveling. Do you agree? Thank you, moderator. You see, air travel is one of the safest and very pleasant means of trans transport. But um, with the situation we have at hand, particularly like uh, some people will say, uh, it's due to human error. All accidents are due to human errors. Every accident is due to human error, particularly when we are talking of vehicles and aeroplanes and so on. You see, like the last speaker said, if proper actions are taken, a plane wants to take off, you service it, you inspect it, you do everything necessary, it will go and come back. The same thing, you want to travel in your car, you must take it to a mechanic and get it properly serviced and looked into, the tire, the brake and everything and it will go and come back. So these are the problems. It's not that air transport is very pleasant. When you're on the, on the air, you love it. You love inside the plane, the condition of the plane, the atmosphere of the plane, everything is very beautiful, and it's very pleasant, and it's very safe. But the situation, like we are saying, that the planes need servicing. Like the plane in question now had records of very bad 
uh, engine problems right from where it was it was first used in Alaska, in America, you know, and it had a lot of you know false landing even there in America, you know, it has a lot of hair return cases, engine cases before it was sold to Dana here, and when it got here to it, had had a lot of you know fault problems, you know, false landing and a lot of mechanical problems, you know, smells, you know, engine and the wire smells in the cockpit and things like that. Yeah. So these are the things we are talking of. Air transport is definitely very safe and very pleasant and uh, very efficient and fast, you know, to solve one's problems. But it appears we are not taking proper uh, servicing and proper care of our planes. Okay. Uh, let's move on to Barista Yoke. It is widely perceived that most of the airline operators, just like we've been saying, don't pay attention to the maintenance of the aircrafts. Right? In fact, they say most of them have what they call Molue, the Molue type of aircraft. <coughs> What's your take on this? Well, um, good evening once again, viewers. Before I say anything on that, I want to seriously sympathize with the families of all those who have lost their beloved ones on the ill-fated Dana crash of Sunday the 3rd of June. Uh, we've always had people say we commiserate with Nigerian government. I, I want to say categorically that there is actually no need for us to commiserate or to sympathize with government. Uh, going back to the question, it is, uh, has been speculations here and there that the airline operators do not take good care of their planes. And I think uh, recent experiences seems to be agreeing with that because uh, this particular plane that crashed on Sunday has a very terrible, terrible history. If you consider the age of the plane itself, if you 